So we just talked about managing stress, and one major contributor to stress can be money. No matter where you're at with your finances, it's always the right time to start planning. I spoke with attorney Darcel Lobo for her top five financial tips on self-care. What does self-care through a financial lens mean to you? Financial self-care really means developing habits that work for you and reflect what you're trying to do Mm -hmm. with your money. And also to make it even simpler, it's really being in control of your money and your money not being in control of you. So do you have specific steps to help us get there? Yeah. So I have kind of outlined some of my five top tips as far as um, developing your financial self-care and implementing processes to help you achieve your financial goals. So number one, you say (laughs) understand your current spending habits. Correct. So I think that one of the biggest things that gets in my clients' way when it comes to their financial self-care is having bad spending habits and not identifying them. So this could be things like shopping when you're bored, impulse purchases, uh, (laughs) (laughs) am I speaking to you at all? (laughs) You're speaking, I, I feel you right now, I'm feeling this. And I'm like thinking about my Starbucks that I was going to get later today that maybe I shouldn't. (laughs) Well, you know, I think a lot of it comes from a lack of planning, Mm -hmm. which is also a lack of budgeting. So if you have planned for the Starbucks, if you have planned for things, then by all means, you've already thought about it beforehand. But when it comes to not thinking about it beforehand, the impulse purchases, the, the boredom purchases, I think that's more what I see as being the issue for some clients. And I get that, I, but I think where I struggle the most is finding a budget method that works for me. And there's so many budgeting methods and just the notion or the thought of budgeting can just be overwhelming for people so many times and not knowing where to start. Um, you know, for me personally, I like a pen and paper. Like as much as I love my technology, Um, You know, and there's so many apps out there for people, whether it's Mint or You Need a Budget or Dollar Bird. I really like just pen and paper or a Word, you know, document. I like to keep it simple and keep it easy for Mm -hmm. myself to kind of know what the goals are and what the spending should be. Um, So there's so many different methods, but I think the key is to finding not just what works for you, but sticking to it. Yeah. I think that is key. I do like the pen and paper method. I feel more comfortable with that as well. Um, But I also sometimes forget about certain purchases. So how important is it to say, review your bank statements? That is one of the biggest things that we should do when we're looking to, to budget is to look at your spending because it's so easy to use a debit card or a credit card and to pay for things and not realize where that money is going and where it's all being spent. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend that my clients, you know, sit down and look over the past two or three months and just look at all the spending. Sometimes that can be quite a a wake up call. So Darcel, you are also a really big proponent of setting up automatic payments and automatic contributions to the health savings accounts, right? Yes, that's correct. So we want to set up automatic payments for things that are necessities. So your rent, your mortgage, your car loan, all of your necessities should be set up on automatic payment. But just as important is reviewing your paychecks and all of your deductions and your withholdings. And you want to make sure you're maximizing those, especially the ones that your employer matches, like a 401k. But your health savings account is such a great way to not just have a tax savings, but to save for health expenses. I see many health expenses for my clients. I see how much that they're spending, um, whether it's vision or dental for themselves, for their children. So contributing to your health savings account to save for those expenses, to pre-plan for them, and to reduce tax liability is a great benefit. Finally, you suggest that we set financial goals. What do you mean by that? Well, setting financial goals is a really great way for you to not just get motivated, but to stay on track as you go through your financial self-care and that journey, but they should be small, doable goals. Um, And when setting financial goals, I think the smaller, the better, because it gives you that momentum to continue to build and continue on your journey for financial self-care. So maybe it's, you know, paying off one credit card by the end of the year. 
Maybe it's starting an emergency fund. Maybe it's developing a small savings, whatever it may be, having these small goals and things that you can actually check off your list as you hit those goals is a great way to keep the momentum going and continue on your financial self-care journey. Such great advice from Darcel. 